What's up softball players, parents, and coaches? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, let's talk about the downfalls of a nice culture in softball. All right, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan Blewett. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and join the almost 10,000 other subscribers who come here for my mindset videos, strength training, arm care, softball throwing mechanics, infield drills, all that sort of stuff. So in today's video, let's talk about nice culture. There's the last air quotes of the day, um, which is that culture, which I think is becoming more and more prevalent and common in softball and baseball, which is everyone's afraid to yell at each other, to chew someone out, to say what needs to be said and give honest feedback, even when it might hurt someone's feelings or just be kind of critical. So nice culture is, ugh, man, it, there's always a line, right? So as a coach, you never want to be disrespectful of your players, but there are absolutely times where players need to wake up. They need to be yelled at and what they're doing and their behavior is not good enough. And they need honest feedback. Even if that feedback isn't what they want to hear, they need to be told that they're not good enough or that they're too slow or that they don't throw hard enough. And a lot of times players and coaches and parents get into this, this like feedback loop where they're afraid to really be honest and they're afraid to say what actually needs to be said so the players can like make an honest assessment of where they're at and get better. So let's go over the five problems that are pretty common with this kind of nice culture. So number one, players don't get honest feedback. I've had a lot of honest conversations with players over the year when I still had my academy. We had softball teams, we had baseball teams, and we would sit players down and be like, look, if you want to play college softball, if you want to play college baseball, you're just, you don't throw hard enough. You don't run hard enough. You don't work hard enough. You don't take enough ground balls. Like you want to play shortstop, but we don't see you putting in the effort. Those are hard conversations to have, and those can sometimes bring a girl to tears when you tell her that she just doesn't work hard enough and that she's not good enough to play shortstop. But sometimes those words need to be said for them to make the progress that they are going to in the future or to make a decision. Say, oh, yeah, I want to work harder and be good enough. Or, yeah, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe the reason I've been putting in a half-hearted effort and just sort of show up at softball practice, but never show up when I'm at home, never put in the work when I'm at home. Maybe the, the reason I do that is because I just I don't really want it that badly. You have to have those honest conversations rather than just always being like, oh, you know, you'll get it or, you know, you had a great season this year, even when that's not really true. Players need honest feedback to grow. And whether and I'm sure for you parents who are in the corporate world, you know this in business, too. If everyone's always just like no one's afraid to speak up about a bad idea or, you know, a, a bad track record, track, bad track record of behavior from someone, it never gets corrected. So you have to get honest feedback to your players one way or the other. Number two, players overlook bad behavior by their peers. This is very common, especially among younger players who are afraid to not be best buddies with everyone on their team, right? I had an experience with this in college summer baseball. Our closer one game was drinking out of a flask in the bullpen. We, you know, we were all like 20 years old and some guys thought it was kind of funny. But when that kid blew the game for us later that night when he was like borderline drunk, we were all pretty pissed and we told our coach about it later. Um, and he's like, that's your fault. That's what he told us. He said, that's your fault, not my fault. I don't take care of that. I'm the coach. That's your guy's thing to take care of. If you guys don't have the balls to speak up when a player's drinking on the bench, then like, what do you, like, what do you, what do you expect? Like that's, that's players have to police a large portion of the team. The coach has other things to worry about. It's not always run and tattle to mommy or daddy. Uh, when there's player issues, players have to deal with some of the stuff. And this comes from a core leadership of players who aren't going to let sort of things like that fly. I was embarrassed and that was an important lesson for me. And I, I know a bunch of my buddies on that team who were like, you're right. We should have spoke up and said, dude, what are you doing? This is a game. We're here to win. This is a serious team. And you're drinking like get out of here with that. That's the thing that a player could handle. But again, when you have this culture where everyone's too afraid to not be just best buddies with everyone, then no one speaks up with that, right? And you have to learn that conflict is okay sometimes when it makes everyone better and it upholds a team standard. Number three, coaches start overlooking bad behavior by players because they're afraid of reprisal from parents. And parents, this is a problem that starts with you. If you don't allow your coach to sometimes chew your kid out or yell or say what needs to be said or be honest even when it's hurtful, then coaches aren't going to be able to give their best to your, to your players. They're going to be tiptoeing on eggshells. They're going to be afraid to get chewed out by a parent. And that sucks. I've had that same thing as well. I chewed a player out a couple years ago. 
Um, he was just wandering around in pregame, not doing what he was doing multiple different times. We talked to him, talked to him, talked to him. And finally, I embarrassed him in front of the whole team. And I said, look, I've talked to you privately a bunch of times. This is not good enough. This is not how we handle this. And guess what? I got a phone call from an angry dad right after the game. And I stood by everything I said. I wasn't disrespectful, but I called him out in front of everyone because it was clearly the only thing that was going to work to get through to him because we'd already had private conversations about his behavior. So if coaches don't have the authorization to do this, if I couldn't, if I was too afraid because I was afraid of this dad calling me, which I was not afraid of him calling me, even though I hated that phone call because let your kid grow as a person, um, no one gets better. The coaches stop coaching your kid because if I'm not allowed to, if I'm not allowed to coach your kid and correct their bad behavior, which I know is good for them, wasn't doing anything that wasn't just good for him long term, which is get back on track, do the things you're supposed to do, conduct yourself like a professional. Then, then why are you even have your kid play sports? So you have to authorize your coaches and let them know you have their back and just be like, look, my kid needs to be set straight, set him straight. I'm not going to get on you about it as long as you're respectful to them. If you got to yell, yell. Number four, players don't get prepared for a non-nice culture, which is going to happen sooner or later. High school sports, coach doesn't have to be nice to you. You know, you hope they still are because otherwise, why are you a coach? But coach might be really sharp-tongued and aggressive, and it might be 10 pieces of criticism for every one compliment. And there are many coaches like that who still have your best interest at heart, still care about you. My strength coach in college, it was probably 20 to 1. Blew it, get back on track for every one time. He'd be like, you know what, you've done a great job this year. But his things were always, his criticisms were always critical feedback on how I could improve or what I was doing wrong rather than, they weren't disrespectful comments. They were just sharp-tongued, get it right, right now. I'm not here to babysit you. I'm here to tell you how to do this. So when that's the case, you got to be ready for that. If you're, if you're always, as, as a player, everyone's always just tiptoeing and patting you on the head and, you know, phrasing it as politely as they can, you're not going to be prepared for people who aren't going to do that or don't have time for that. In high school varsity sports, that's where that starts to happen, and certainly in college sports. You play for a big school, they're not there to, to, again, to pat you on the head and phrase everything delicately so that you're a little flower. They're there to get you better. And if that means a quick yell, you know, in the middle of infield practice, hey, that's not where you go on that ball. That's what's going to happen. Players need to be prepared for that. So if they get no doses of it throughout their entire youth and then suddenly they're thrown to the fire in college, it's not going to go well. And they're going to want to transfer. They're going to think they're being – they're going to they're going to interpret the situ- situation wrong, and it's just not going to end well for anyone. So players need to start getting a dose of this in increasing quantities while they're young. It's good for them. Again, as long as it's not blatantly disrespectful – um, where so, you know, you're, they're calling your names or you're stupid or that's not the kind of stuff I'm talking about. But again, I've had so many instances in my career where it's blew it, get it right. This is how it's done. Do it. Focus right now. Right. That kind of stuff. It wakes you up as a player. And sometimes you just need to be waken up by good coaching feedback. And lastly, leadership is stifled. If no one feels like they can, they can speak up. You're not going to find that leadership core from players. Players aren't going to come into their own and and want to set someone straight like like me in that situation where my teammate was drinking. I mean, that's like a ridiculous example, right? But it's that happened, and no one on my team had the balls to say anything about it. It was crazy. Looking back on it now, it's like, how did we not? How did none of us say something? But we didn't. And again, until someone authorizes you like our coach did, he said, look, you say what needs to be said. You do it, do what needs to be done. And when players understand that, hey, you know, I'm a young player on this team and, and she's a, a great four hitter. If she says that I'm not hustling, then yeah, I need to hustle more, right? Players need to feel like they can say what needs to be said and give people feedback, whether it's constructive, whether it's critical, whatever, they need to be allowed to do that. But if it's this culture where you've got to phrase it nice or someone's going to, you know, talk bad about you behind your back or coach is going to be, oh, don't say it that way. It's just like leaders aren't going to be able to be leaders anymore. Sometimes you've got to speak up. You've got to say what needs to be said. And in the heat of the moment in the game, it's just like you don't have time to sit down and, you know, really talk through how you're both feeling about that situation. Sometimes it's like, look, that ball, you need to hustle. That ball, you need to get, you should have been on second base. That can't happen. You can't drop that ball in that situation. That's the kind of stuff that happens in real softball and real baseball. And again, there's not time to sugarcoat everything. So players and parents and coaches need to be authorized to have 
this balance where people are respectful of each other, but we're not expected to always sugarcoat every single thing and we can't give honest feedback. And we, again, everything has to be super duper nice. All right. So leave me a comment below, shoot me an email. How do you feel about this video? I think this is a growing problem in both softball and baseball and just in sports in general. And I think a concerted effort by a, the community, by your whole team, not just the coach, not just the players, but everyone, the players, parents, and coaches having expectations before a season starts is a really healthy thing to understand, look, I'm going to yell at your kids, but it's not, it's not going to be disrespectful. I'm not going to tell them they're stupid. I'm not going to call them names. I'm not going to do any of that stuff, but I'm going to yell at them and I'm going to set them straight and I'm going to make sure that they learn this game the right way. And I think that's okay. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'm Coach Dan Blewett, and I'll see you here in the next video.